Okay, the scatter plot below shows the profit by month for a new company, and they want us to use this line to estimate the profit in the 18th month. Oops, sorry. Here's the 18th month right here. Well, let me just go down. Um, if you look where the month is 18, just look up to the line and see what the profit is at that point, and that's your answer. So it's a little bit above 40,000, right? Uh, 50 is up here. 45 will be the halfway mark. It doesn't quite reach that, so we'll pick 42,500. Moving forward, Craig sees an advertisement for a car. Which information would not be quantitative? So we're finding something that's not quantitative, and quantitative means referring to a number value. So the weight of the car, the cost of the car, and the mileage of the car are all quantitative. However, the model is something called qualitative. Right? If I said, what kind of car do you have? And I said, I have a, a beautiful Ford car or something like that. Uh, I'm giving you the model as a reference. That model numerically doesn't really mean anything. So it's qualitative. Moving on. Here, based on the cumulative frequency histogram, determine the number of swimmers who swam between 200 and 249 yards. So think about the way this is set up. Okay, so we have a cumulative diagram here. And I'm going to fix this. This should be 12. I'm going to label the, the heights of each bar. First we're at 6, then we're at 12, we stay at 12, go up to 15, and then finally 20. So in each of these intervals, this is cumulative, so we're just piling on more and more people in each interval. So the first interval is 50 to 99. But they want to know just how many people are in this one interval, 200 to 249. So in 50 through 99, there are 6 people. In the next interval, 99, I'll say, sorry, 100, we'll say, 100 to 149. There are a total of 12, so there's six more. In the next interval, we go from 150 right, to, to 199, and there's no one there because the total values don't change. And then we go from 200 to 249, and we add three more, so there are three people there, and our answer is three. And then in the last interval, we have 250 to 299, and there are one, two, three, four, five more because the total rises by five. Determine the number of sw swimmers who swam between 150 and 199. Oh, we already did that, that's zero, right? No one was added there. Determine the number of swimmers who took the swim. So how many are there in total? Well, they're gonna be 20, right? It's the final bar of the cumulative, uh, the cumulative frequency histogram, but we can count up the total anyway. Six and six is 12, plus these eight right here is 20 people. You can always just count that last bar. Next, we want to know which data can be classified as quantitative. Quantitative, again, refers to a number value. So the first names of students is not a number value, it's a name. The ages is a number. That's, a, that's going to be a good one. You can determine who's older. Hair colors, color can be determined through number. However, it's more of a quad, qualitative kind of measure. And your favorite sport is something that's definitely opinion-based or qualitative. So we'll go with two for the ages of students. The next one. Scatter plot was constructed. What is the equation for this line of best fit? Notice our, our y intercept is here at 25. So we need the equation of the line in y equals mx plus b form, where the b value is 25, with the y intercept. The slope is the change in y over change in x, and I can pick any points I want for that. So I'll pick, let's say, these two. I go up 5 and over 1. Slope is the rise over the run, or 5 over, over 1. So m equals 5. So our equation should be y equals 5x plus 25, which is choice 4. Okay, doing great. A couple more problems. All right. A survey is being conducted to determine if a cable company should add another sports channel. Which random survey would be the least biased? Um, again, with every survey, you're trying to represent the most people possible from the least amount of information. So you're Information should be diverse, diverse and not representative of only a certain group. So surveying 30 men at the gym is not going to be great because it's only surveying men and ignoring what women want. Surveying 45 people at a mall might be pretty good. It's a larger sample size, although it is dealing only with, with shoppers. Um, number three, surveying 50 fans at a football game. Again, that's good, but they're all at a football game. They're going to want more football. It's too biased. Four, serving 20 members of a high school soccer team. Not a good idea because they're soccer fans. Obviously, they're playing soccer. So choice two is the most diverse, or at least bias. Instead of data is graphed. This scatter plot shows what kind of correlation. Well, here we have this almost linear trend right here. So I'm going to say it's a positive correlation. No correlation would show you a bunch of dots scattered all over the place in your graph. 
undefined correlation would be one that's probably just vertical like this, right? Because so you have this vertical line, sorry, a vertical line. Um, and a negative correlation would form points that kind of have this negative slope to them like this. So we have a positive correlation. Which situation is an example of bivariate data? Bivariate means two variables, and the variables x and y or whatever impact each other. So you're studying the relationship between two things. That's what bivariate is. The number of pizzas Tony eats during her years in high school is just a kind of a frequency. How many pizzas did you eat? It doesn't really tell you why you ate those pizzas or what it was connected to. The number of times Ezra puts, and it's called not bivariate, but univariant or one variable. The number of times Ezra puts air in his bicycle tires during the summer, that's again just a frequency, a univariate. It's just how many times you put the air on the tire. The number of home runs, hits per game, and the number of hours he practices, that's your bivariate because you're connecting the number of hours you practice with the home runs. How does practice affect your ability? That's bivariate. Last choice, number of hours. Um, that's just, again, just counting the number of hours you study. It doesn't say how that those hours affect your scores. Okay, which 10-minute interval contains the first quartile? First quartile, or Q1, contains the first 25% of your data. They tell us here that there are 30 students. So what is, right, 25% of 30? 0.25 times 30, or 1 fourth of 30. We can find that quickly. 0.25 times 30 is 7.5. So which of these intervals contains 7.5? Um, so we have 2 in the first one, but this is cumulative. So let's say 5 in this next interval. They're talking about 41 through 50. And they're saying there are 3 more than there were. In the beginning, right, there are two and now five, so there's three here. So, okay, we're going to turn this into a regular frequency, not cumulative. So next, we go up to 60, so let's change it so it's 51 through 60, and that goes from three to 10. So that contains seven more values than there were before. So here, the 10-minute interval contains the first quartile, right, of all the data. Uh, we already hit that because we went two, then three more, it's five, now uh, seven more, in this range right here from 51 through 60, we have the first seven and a half data points of the first 25%. Okay, finally, a school wants to add a co-ed soccer program to determine student interest in the program. A survey is taken in order to get an unbiased sample, which group should the school survey? In other words, what's the most diverse group? Every third student entering the building. That's probably gonna be pretty good because it, it, you know, it surveys everybody entering the building. Every member in the varsity football team. That's not a good idea because you know their interests already, um, especially if they're already playing football. Um, every member in Miss Zimmer's drama classes. Well, drama, everybody that's choosing the drama class, or I guess we're implying that they chose that class, um, all has a certain interest in common. It's too biased, the two alike. Every student having a second period French class. Again, those are all students interested in French. You're only going to get a small subpopulation. Every third student entering the building will be the most random, which is what you want, and the most diverse, because everybody needs to enter the building to begin with. All right, thank you.